Uh, first, let's get an update on the weather and the snow totals that have been coming down from our Lisa Green. Good morning, Lisa. Good morning. Yeah, we're dealing with with winter weather here and snow in the Southern Valley, and there are still cleaning up, as Christy was saying, up north. So here's a look at some of the snowfall totals from yesterday. Again, we had those two systems that bookended the weekend. The first one Friday night and into Saturday, not as intense as what we had yesterday in that heavier band. East Grand Forks are seven miles east of that area. A report came in of a foot of snow. New Folden, 10 inches. Grand Forks, nine. And Hatton had eight and a half and Roseau had seven. So it was all along one heavy band that just kind of stayed in the same place throughout the day yesterday. And now we've got that band in the Southern Valley, Bemidji, down through Detroit Lakes and Fargo and back over toward Ellendale in southeastern North Dakota is where the focus for the snow is now. And you can see those areas of darker blue and those spotty areas of white within that darker blue. That's where the heavier flakes are, the heavier rate is. And basically between Detroit Lakes and Pelican Rapids, we've got one pocket there that looks rather they're heavy. Fargo's getting some good snow, and so is Lisbon. And this is scattered, so you can see there's a break between this round and another one to the southwest. We might fill in a little bit more here this morning, but little by little, we'll eventually see this move on. I'll show you that coming up here, but we do want to talk about conditions this morning. Visibility is low in a lot of places. First of all, Southern Valley, where the snow is falling, it's low. It's less than a mile in some areas, thanks to the snow. But out west, we also have problems with fog to start off your Monday. Zero visibility report in Cooperstown and Carrington and only a quarter mile in Devil's Lake and over by Jamestown. So a couple of areas of trouble and wind is less than 10 miles per hour right now. We've got temperatures that are uh, also below freezing. So the snow is sticking and we've got icy patches to watch out for. Mm -hmm. A winter weather advisory in effect through the morning and the afternoon today for uh, the southern half of the valley, basically. Grand Forks looks like we're going to get a little break today. Much deserved after yesterday's heavy snowfall. So here's a look at that hour by hour planner. Some areas, some pockets of heavier snow, those purples you see on the map, that's where we're uh, looking at the potential for some heavy snow around noon. And this continues into the afternoon and evening as the system lifts to the north and east. By four o'clock, still some snow coming down in some areas. Temperatures in the mid 30s, so there's going to be some slushy conditions, maybe even a little bit of freezing drizzle because of the warmer weather. Uh, so it could just end up being just as messy or maybe even worse for that drive home tonight. Getting into the later evening hours, the snow is winding down and we'll see that move on and clear out. Looks like we've had an update to our snowfall potential anywhere in that medium blue color. That's a three to six inch range. Fargo's right on the edge of that. So we're looking at maybe a couple of inches to three inches of snow and then a steep drop off. Grand Forks is looking pretty quiet um, at this point in time. So the, the rumors are true. We do have 44 degrees in the forecast for Tuesday and not just that, but it's going to be sunny too. And that combination will mean some big time melting of the snow that's uh, fallen over the last couple of days. And then Wednesday, another blast of winter coming in a high of 38 and we just have some unsettled weather here off and on through the week as we're trying to transition out of one season and into the next and looking ahead to Easter weekend. Mm -hmm. Good Friday again a little milder but a chance for some snow and rain. Uh, but by the time we get to Easter we start to dry out and then uh, we cool down too. So it's one of those Easter's you'll need your coat uh, to head to, to church and all of your Easter events. So uh, not bad in the forecast but <laughs> <laughs> not not Chris bad. Laughing at me. Chris was like, can hibernate for that exactly <laughs> next bout of winter. Twenty eight. That's gonna feel so cold. Especially tomorrow's gonna feel awesome. Yep. Watch out tomorrow. for kids. Oh. Awesome. Because the kids and I was one of those. As soon as it gets like above. 38 degrees I was out there with my scooter or somehow playing outside <laughs> after oh, yeah. the winter you know right because you're just, just so excited to be out there yeah and tomorrow will be nice for that it mm -hmm. will be it'll just be kind of slushy though too just but then back mind. when we go back to 28 then I know we're I'm all gonna be in our it. house and be like mm, Lisa great <laughs> <laughs> don't like her I don't like blame it either. You. <laughs> if we could have 70 and sunny every day, I would love that. Amen. <laughs> Me too. That would be would awesome. Would you just pre-record your weather then if, you, if it was like that? Right. So if I say it, it makes it true. Is that how that works? There you go. That'll work for me. <laughs> but if you live like in, you know... LA oh, or Arizona, yes. yeah, you could just pre-record it and be like, okay, 95 tomorrow. And just change days. change sweaters that you wear over your <laughs> yeah. dress. There it could just go. be a black dress underneath, but then just change blazers and sweaters. I like that plan. We'll have to it. work on that one. Thank you, Lisa. <laughs> you bet. How was your weekend? <clears throat>
I never got to busy. ask you. I also didn't realize our show was coming up. I was sitting at back at my computer getting ready and for for the rest of my day, not even getting ready for the show. And all of a sudden I looked down and it said 8.56. And I was like, oh my gosh. What? <laughs> I don't know if I tuned out all of the pages that we usually get that the show is coming up, but I just... Maybe I was it was a different, not, I think I it's a different ready. voice. So maybe that's what it was. You oh, weren't maybe, used to the, maybe. To the voice. I tuned out all the other people's voices. We had a busy weekend. Uh, Isabella, she's like totally into comics now. Mm -hmm. We did like a daddy daughter day. We went and picked up some comics. Really? And, yeah, just uh, went to a coffee shop. And, you know, she she's eight, so she loves to talk. So we just sit there and chatter, chatter, that's chatter. Really cute. <laughs> <It's fun. laughs> so where do you go get your comics? Is it like Paradox Comics? Yeah, or yeah, is it the like one downtown. Yeah. And it's right by that uh, 20 Below coffee place where they've yeah. got just super delicious coffee and you kind of sit out there. It's a nice little vibe to sit in the place mm -hmm. and so it's good. Watch how they brew coffee in like 20 different ways. Have you ever just sat there and watched? Yes. It's like a chemistry experiment. Yes. And I've also been banned from there, not by <laughs> not by the store owners, but by people in the newsroom. Because whenever I go there and get coffee and then You're come back like, to work, <sighs> yeah. I'm on such a high energy level that it's... <laughs> when I was drinking the coffee on Saturday, I mean, you start drinking, you're like, oh, this is really good. And then you're like, you can just feel it kind of hit your... I go, oh, I need to slow down. I took most of the coffee home because I knew otherwise I would not sleep. I'd be buzzing through the day. But it's... Uh, and then they had this cool way. I don't even remember what it was called where they like put fire underneath yes. the thing. It looks like a, you know how in science class you yes. have the Bunsen burners? Yeah, there, there, that's, that's what, what it looks like. Yes. And they heat up the water and then the pressure somehow goes up where the coffee grounds are and they stir it up a little bit. And then, then they it, take the heat away, the pressure goes away and it falls back down to this delicious coffee and they serve it, which looks like almost like a German style kind of, you know, like, Oktoberfest handle, but it's still in the Bunsen burner. It's it's amazing. It was fun. I need to go back there again and have like one of those, like you did, go and have a Saturday where you can sit hang out. there for a while. Because lately my trips to coffee places have been a quick grab and go instead of actually getting to sit and just enjoy it. Yeah, it was, uh, it was just kind of chill. But what about you? Were you uh, getting we, prepped for a little trip? I, yeah, well, we actually, on Friday night, I went to Sweet Miracles and got to see Miss America again. So this oh. is for Children's Miracle Network. And they give you lots of wine samples. <laughs> and I just have a warning if there is a silent auction thing with paper and <clears throat> you just you sign any. up your thing <laughs> and you're getting wine samples, it can be dangerous. Um, so I was going around bidding on some items, but there were some really cool items. And one of them, there's a little boy, Noah, who is going to be the champion for this year. Him and his family shared their story about what they went through and now how he's been doing and he was just so cute because he's six so you have to understand six-year-olds don't have yeah. the the highest um amount of patience <laughs> <laughs> and so he like started playing he started taking pictures on his dad's phone for him but he was just such a little sweetie and then he was bidding on his own he had painted a picture that they had for the auction and he was bidding on his own picture with his parents money but don't worry, someone outbidded him so that they could bring it home instead of the parents so spending the money. So was he or you, did you see what happened to Blue Ivy mm -mm. when she was at an auction? So she's sitting there and, you know, she's got mom, pa, Beyonce, and Jay-Z sitting next to her. And something pops up for like 19, 21 grand. And she like holds up the paddle. They end up selling it to Blue Ivy, I think. Oh, or, no. I don't know they sold it to her, but she holds the paddle. Like, okay, Blue Ivy. It. Yeah, 19 grand. <laughs> and so then they went back and Jay-Z's like on her like this, like holding like, her. Like tie her arms, arms down. <laughs> down. <laughs> It was so funny. It's like one of those moments when you hope like something doesn't fly by right, you, where exactly. you're like waving it in your art in the air. So did you pick anything up, or did everyone? I did. Pick it? I did. I got a girls' weekend um, at the Courtyard Bar Marriott. I didn't even tell my girls yet. I won. Nice. Uh, my bid was the highest for the girls' weekend. So then you have two nights stay, um, and then there was like breakfast for the four of you. There was some drink tickets. There was dinner. Oh, that'd be and fun. And so I was like, oh, that'd be kind of fun to have a girl's, like, I always like those staycations. Sometimes those mm -hmm. are the vacations that end up being the most relaxing that you needed because you don't really have to pack too much because your apartment's down the road. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and then you don't have to worry about, you know, usually you, then you have someone's car there. Or yeah, you can Uber you, back and forth from downtown to there or wherever where you, you need get to go. To and... Or stay and party in the hotel the whole night. Put on some comfy, snuggy robes and then you're good to go. <laughs> it's like an so adult bam. slumber party. <laughs> Okay, so we all, of course, have been talking a lot about the Winter Olympics and, of course, all of the success from our area. And after that gold medal win, one Grand Forks native is giving the world of TV broadcasting a shot. 
Isn't this exciting? I love this story. So Monique Lamru Morando made her TV debut on Friday as a studio analysis for the NHL Tonight show on the NHL Network. So the three-time Olympian, she scored tying the tying goal against Canada to help Team USA capture that gold medal. <clears throat> um, that was last month in South Korea, and her sister. Uh, scored that game-winning gold in that overtime shootout. And now she says she's looking forward to sharing her perspective and passion for the game and for hockey with fans all around the world. Did you see your first night on the air? Mm -mm. Do we have that clip? Uh, it was great. So, Did she do well? <clears throat> she's hanging out with the guys, and apparently like she's got a stick, and they all got a stick, and they're kind of doing their thing, and the guy kind of started, you know... I didn't hear it all, but kind of busted her chops a little bit. So she like slashes his stick and kind of gets at him. <laughs> and first night on the air, she's like, yeah, no jitters here. I'm loving this. So it was that fun is to watch. good. I think they've had so much success and it's so great to see what they're doing after the Olympics too. You know, how they're kind of moving on to that next step in that next phase yeah. in their life too. This would be great for women's hockey. I mean, mm -hmm. to have her there from Grand Forks, the gold medal. And so kudos to her. I think also, if I get his name wrong, Will Borgen, does that sound right? The gentleman from Moorhead that signed as well. So uh, high school hockey player from Moorhead signed with, I believe it was the Buffalo Sabres. Oh, okay, cool. I mean, there's just like hockey central here. Yeah. Yay. You need to get you a stick, Larson, I, some skates. I've been on skates. I was on skates last week, but they were ice skates. <laughs> <laughs> I had it and I had a couple falls. I would hope they were ice skates. <laughs> oh, I mean, figure skating oh, ice oh, skates, okay. not the hockey <laughs> skates. Figure skates. Have you I been on I hockey skates? Said. Um, yeah, like once or twice. Maybe. With a stick or no stick? Uh, yeah, a couple times. Actually, I lied. Yeah, I've done that. We, we need to get, when we've we gone need to get up to and, UND or For Fargo Forest, I've gotten to go out on the ice with some of those people a couple times. Done. UND was nice because the guys made me feel good about <laughs> not being good at hockey. So here, here's what we'll do. We'll do a, a beach volleyball matchup, and then you and I will do a we'll do like a three and three ice hockey, hockey? matchup. Yeah. Oh, I am knocking you over. <laughs> I will take the two-minute penalty. We're going to fight it out. <laughs> They're going to give you a major. <laughs> She's thrown out of the game exactly. after after one play. I just don't even skate towards the puck. I just skate towards, <laughs> towards Chris. You're going to be like the, oh, what are they called again, the tough guys? I can't think of the This right is what Jaron's job used to be. Yeah, that's right, in, the enforcer. In the, yes, the enforcer. <laughs> That was, he admits it, when he was part of the Spuds hockey team, yes, they were a great team and they did win, but he said, I admit it, I wasn't really part of the team that attributed to the win. I mean, everyone does, yeah, he but was he was more of the, the oh, that coach is mad at that player, Jaren got sent out to go and <laughs> teach him a little lesson. I can just see you coming in with the high elbows, Larson, into the boards and just, No, I'd be more, care I'd be more careful than that. I'd oh, be like, you'd be like strategic about it or? <laughs> be very secretive, like, oh, he, he fell on his, all on his own. <laughs> Man, that brings me back memories. Don't All right, uh, <laughs> stay with us. We're going to talk about how to not get so busy in life that it impacts your health and much more. Stick around.